Hi, I'm Thomas Pearce and I'm Head of Real Estate Commercial for GMW Solicitors. Recent stats showed that we have just under 300,000 homes vacant in the UK and there's a target to deliver each year the same figure. So we've really got what some people have described as a national travesty, where in our society people can't afford their home. So in context, we've got 8.5 million people with an unmet housing need. 1.2 million of those could go straight into social housing. We've got a responsibility, therefore, to address this collaboratively and come up with a much better resolution and a workable plan. We've got to look at supply and we've got to look at the solutions. There isn't a single solution. So we've got to assess the what the major house builders have and they're bringing through. What does the overall supply chain look like? What's currently stalled in the planning system? What off offerings there are in other elements of the market, like build to rent, including single family homes, affordable, social housing, it's worth noting that by the end of 2021, within the UK, we had 25% of properties rented privately, compared to, say, circa 48% in Germany. So some could see a potential there for that to increase. We've also got to acknowledge that the Help to Buy scheme, which was extended by the government, expires next spring. So for me, it's going to be really interesting to see how that plays into the housing market, in general, for the developers and the buyers. Will it be a major pinch point? And what are the options going forward? I expect that we'll see more affordable delivered, and rent to buy available to assist those with the affordability issues and there's a definite need on the other side for much more social housing and build to rent for those who can't afford to buy or who would prefer to rent. With our clients as well we're seeing a real demand by SME developers who've got quality viable strategic sites with planning but still can't get the relevant funding to make it work. So through the levelling up home building fund, we're increasingly seeing Homes England providing investment directly to those SME developers we're talking about for residential led developments to assist them to unlock their sites by way of development finance and infrastructure finance. Now these loans start at £250,000 but general loans circa two to five million pound range. definitely opportunities from the real estate sectors. In fact, pre-pandemic, it's worth remembering that we had the situation where with the change in permitted development rights, uh, redundant office stock was being utilised for residential conversion. That's still a really hot property in the northwest, and we've seen quite a lot of instructions in the recent weeks still in that sector. Um, looking to the future, we could well see vacant, poor-performing shopping centres acquired and coming through as mixed-use communities. The key consideration here is the pushback towards the cities. There's a view that by 2050, most people will again be living in cities. So what does the placemaking piece look like in that scenario? And what can we do in terms of availability of schooling, availability of amenities? And if we've got a situation where planning permissions are coming through for live schemes with no or limited provision for affordable, but in some cases hundreds of parking spaces, how do we ensure that housing is available for as many people as possible to either buy or rent? So in terms of challenges for the affordable housing market, there's been much discussion recently, including on Place Northwest, a scenario in relation to recent planning permissions granted and a lack of provision for affordable. Equally, from an investment scenario, we're seeing a significant interest being piqued by funds, affordable housing sector and the social housing sector. Impact of the pandemic, the fallout post-Brexit also plays a part in the sector. And depending on the size and scale of the development, new fire safety regulations come into play, need to be contended with and considered. So the reality is that these points, together with the drive for net zero by 2050, lead to a fundamental change in the way that developments were planned, designed and built. So looking forward, I think it's vital that we have a scenario whereby local authorities, housing associations, developers and the funds, where relevant, work collaboratively in partnership to see what the sector needs and how it's best served to deliver an increase in affordable supply and to tap into those sites and the funding to best deliver these when they're most needed clear as well that some of the major stakeholders, Homes England being a key player, will need to have a really important part in setting this agenda going forward.